So is it possible to exploit this very limited overwrite? Of course it is, otherwise we wouldn't have the section. So let's go ahead and see the magic show that is good old fashioned exploit engineering. And then afterwards, let's explain to you how the magic works. Secure kernel debugger is attached here and the fix has been unpatched by the debugger command. Before the exploit, the shared page is filled with zeros rather than the shell code and the shared page is not executable. I will play the demo video now. I run the first Python script, which will do the push shipping, place live dump MDL after the hole, and trigger the first vulnerability and modify the MDL next pointer. It takes some time for the push shipping. Then I run the second Python script, which will detect if the tentative shared memory has been modified or not. If it has been modified, I can do further up to read what where. The third Python script will modify the shared page PTE to executable. And the last Python script will redirect the SKPG context callback routine to the shell code I prepared in the shared page. After the due time comes, the shell code gets executed successfully. Now the shared page is executable and it is filled with the demo shell code. And this piece of shell code is invoked by redirecting the SKPG context callback routine. And this shell code will get executed periodically. I can modify the shell code from VTL0 freely at any time for any purpose. In this way, arbitrary code execution is achieved. So we know that the code assumes the allocation will be big enough for an MDL header plus a PFN array. But if the attacker sets the byte count to less than the size of the MDL, then there's not even gonna be enough size for the header. So we've been assuming that they set it to a size of 10 and that's shown here as taken from the original research. And this is going to, this small size of 10 is going to cause the allocation of hex 10 bytes to occur on the VS or variable size pool uh, Microsoft calls the kernel heap the pool, and this is going to be in the VTL1 kernel. So you're in the secure kernel. This allocates 10 bytes for the undo MDL, but as you can see, 10 bytes is not going to be enough for even the header information. And so this picture just shows furthermore that there's going to be the next 20 bytes after that first 10 bytes is going to be the next chunk on the VS pool. So it's going to have some header information and then it'll have some actual data. Okay, so we said the attacker doesn't control the mapped system VA and that that SKMM map data transfer was responsible for figuring out where it wanted to map in virtual address space all of this physical memory described by the MDL that's coming into the secure kernel. So that mapped system VA was ultimately used for the original MDL or original undo MDL, I believe it was actually called in the pseudocode. So then what also happens is that information from this original MDL is copied to the undo MDL. In the original research, they showed the assembly, but again, we can't assume that you know assembly. So here was the pseudocode that we had pulled from React OS, the open source re-implementation of the Windows kernel. So what does this code do? What does this MM initialize MDL do that's leading to this out of bound writes? Well, it's setting next to null. So just always that it's not a tech controlled value setting the size to size of MDL plus size of PFN array. And if you look at you know the size of PFN array, it is defined as this, which is defined as this, etc. And it's just trying to say this is all attacker influenced thing. So size is attacker controlled. Then flags is hard coded to zero. So nothing useful for the attacker there. But the start VA is from the page aligned original MDL byte offset. So page alignment usually just means taking a particular address and making it uh, aligned to hex 1000 bytes, for instance. So start VA is attacker controlled, byte offset is attacker controlled from the original MDL byte offset, and byte count is attacker controlled from the original MDL byte count. So you can see that you know at you only had a 10 allocation, and so all of the attacker controlled values actually skip over this uh, heap header and offset hex 10 past the end of your allocation, 
and clobber some data there. So then the question is, what should an attacker do to corrupt? Like, what should they target with their corruption? They've got hex 10 bytes worth of heap data overwrite, uh, but, you know, what can you do with that? Well, the researchers decided to corrupt other MDLs. So, you know, we're having fun with MDLs here, so why not just place another MDL there so that ultimately, if you have another MDL, the victim MDL allocated, well, there's going to be that header before the allocation, and then the first 10 bytes of an MDL being allocated at that offset would correspond to the next size flags, etc. So that data, this data, becomes that data of the victim MDL, which is ultimately overwritten. So again, their goal is, you know, shape and uh, groom the pool in such a way that the undo MDL gets allocated next to a victim MDL, which they will ultimately smash the first 20 bytes of. And yeah, that, that says plus 20, but it's actually, you know, the, the offset zero of the MDL. So one of the things that helps an attacker with pool shaping or heap grooming is this SK live dump start API. So this is a secure call. So it's a call that the less secure kernel makes to the more secure kernel for the more secure kernel to do operations on behalf of the less secure kernel. So what it does is it allocates a list of MDLs into a linked list, a singly linked list, uh, linked via the MDL next pointer. So that would look something like this. There's this live dump context, which has a pointer to the head of this linked list. It's a singly linked list, and every element in that linked list will have the same sized PFN array. So whether it's you know one PFN or eight PFNs, it's going to be they're all the same size. And the important thing is that it's a linked list based on the next, and we've just shown that if an attacker can successfully allocate two MDLs back to back, the undo MDL and the victim MDL, they can clobber the next pointer of some MDL somewhere. All right, and so that's what I just said. They're all going to be the same size count. Now, at this point, the researchers wanted to talk a little bit about the secure kernel pool, but I just want to say basically there's, you know, two things where the allocations could potentially occur. There's the variable size heap where different allocations of different sizes are mixed together. And in general, attackers are always going to prefer that. If they can mix and match different sizes, uh, then they can potentially overwrite things that are more beneficial to them as opposed to something like low fragmentation heap where all allocations are the same size that limits the types of structures they can allocate to structures that are exactly the same size as the thing that they're overflowing. So it's easier to coerce the VS heap than it is to coerce the low fragmentation heap. So that is why the attacker wants to, why, why these researchers chose to target overwriting an MDL because they could guarantee that it was going to appear on the VS heap along with their victim, M, or sorry, along with their undo MDL that they're originally uh, overwriting. So this is just sort of a rundown of how they're ultimately going to achieve their, their heap shaping. They're gonna focus on the VS heap they're going to use this particular secure call. So that's just the uh, identity. That's the you know magic number used for that particular secure call. Uh, create secure image, which can create uh, allocations of controlled size of 30 bytes minimum. And then they're going to deallocate some things to make holes and then overwrite uh, the allocations next to those holes. So that is not as interesting as this picture. So they had pseudocode, or sorry, not pseudocode, but uh, Python code in for their proof of concept in the original, uh, in the original research. But that's not as useful to us, and it's actually not complete. There's some stuff that's not defined uh, in the actual research. So what we really care about is this notion of they're going to use some of those things like secure service, create secure image, to allocate things A and B, A and B, A and B uh, of different sizes. And they're wanting to you know, allocate them alternatingly so that they don't have just a whole bunch of allocations of the same size that would ultimately lead to use of the low fragmentation. So A's and B's alternatively are allocated, and then they are going to actually deallocate some of them. So free all of the B allocations to create holes. So that wasn't in the original thing, so I just added this in here. And once you free the allocations, then next you are going to allocate something of size C, same as the original B, but uh, it's going to you know fill in these and that's going to be allocated with this SK live dump start, which will mean that these things are going to be all MDLs in the MDL linked list. So they'll all land in those holes 
created by the deallocation of B. So now you've got C is a bunch of linked list of MDLs. Then you go ahead and deallocate or free all of the A allocations. Next, you allocate some structures of size A minus 20. So you're going to create these Ds that are A minus 20. Those should land in the holes uh, freed up by the deallocation of A. And what it's going to mean is because D is A minus 20, that means this little hole right there is 20 big. So that means that that has exactly 10 bytes for a header and 10 bytes for an allocation. So basically the under allocations that are going to be achieved via the uh, passing a byte size from the kernel that's going to be hex 10, these are perfectly sized for a hex 10 allocation, hex 10 for data and hex 10 for header. All right, so again, remember that, you know, we allocated hex 10 here, that's gonna be our thing. And then there's gonna be these holes that are available for another hex 20, which will have enough space for the heap header and 10 bytes of data. So, right, that's 10 bytes of header. This is the 10 bytes of data. And then this was that undo MDL. And so implicitly that, you know, 10 allocation of undo MDL implicitly had some header that was just not shown before it. All right, so finally, once the undo MDL E is allocated, it will land in one of these holes somewhere. And we know that once you have the undo MDL that is undersized, then the mm initialize MDL will cause those out of bound writes past the bounds of E. And in this picture, that's showing corrupting this thing C, which they're saying is a live dump MDL. It's one of those things in that linked list that was allocated via the linked list allocation function. So at this point, again, this is the undo MDL. It's going to have overwrite past the end of it, which is specifically targeting something in the linked list. You don't know where it's going to be in the linked list. You don't know either whether E lands there or there or there or there. But through all of this pool shaping, through all of this heap grooming, the goal is to make sure that it's going to corrupt one of these linked list entries. So there you go. Boom. Victim MDL should be one of those linked list entries. And that is super useful because that next is a pointer. So now we've got an acid pointer and acid pointers give us the capability to write what where. So what do we do now? What are we going to write and where and why? And why is that useful? Okay, so we talked before about how SK Live Dump Start would create a linked list of MDLs. The next useful secure call is SK Live Dump Add Buffer. And the point of this is that it just basically finds an MDL inside of that linked list created by live dump start, and it writes to the PFN array of the target MDL. So at this point, the attacker can overwrite the victim MDL next pointer, and they need to figure out where to point it to. And so the question becomes, how can the attacker find something to overwrite, given the fact that there's kernel address space layout randomization in effect in the secure kernel uh, memory space range. And of course, the attackers should and do always try to be lazy and take the path of least resistance if humanly possible. And so it turns out that when you have something like address based layout randomization, if not everything's randomized, then they can absolutely take advantage of that. So the researchers pointed out that there are a variety of predictable addresses, or at least there were at the time of this research. And in particular, they liked this shared page. There was this shared page that would be accessible in VTL1 and also VTL0. And so this was just a fixed address where they could guarantee that it would be readable or writable from different sides. So let's imagine that we've got our linked list here and you have that undo MDL which overflows into and corrupts the next header of the victim MDL. So what they need is they need to point that at something they want to corrupt or something they can control. So they're going to point that at this thing that the researchers called a pivot MDL. And this is a completely artificial construction that is created over on the attacker side in VTL0. So the attacker has this shared memory page that is going to be writable from VTL0 and read only over in VTL1. So the attacker controls everything about this entire page. So from the secure space where they're doing the corruption, they want to point this at the VTL1 read-only mapping of this fake and you know completely attacker-controlled quote-unquote pivot MDL. 
So they overwrite the next and they have this shared page so they know exactly what virtual address they need to point it at. And as I said, it's writable from VTL0 and that means effectively this is one big ACID MDL of completely controlled data. So that means also in the linked list, this can then point somewhere else as well. And we're gonna need to figure out where that should point. But uh, first, the attacker has to deal with the fact that, you know, they wanna use this, uh, this uh, SK live dump add buffer, this uh, secure kernel call. They wanna use this and the whole point of this is that it like writes into the linked list at the PFN array. But they've got this problem of if it writes into the linked list at this entry, then this is a read-only entry, and therefore, you know, that would cause a fault, and that would cause an error, and that's not what they're trying to achieve. So they need to somehow use this API. They want to walk the linked list and ultimately write somewhere else as specified by next, while simultaneously skipping writing into this. So it turns out that that can be achieved by manipulation of this byte count. So if the attacker is trying to just write in a single entry, they manipulate this byte count, and they are going to set that to a value that is less than a single page. So the, the whole point of this thing is to like add a page frame, add a single hex 1000 chunk of data to this linked list. And so by saying, oh yeah, sorry, we don't actually have enough space. We don't have a byte count that can support hex 1000 worth of data. That'll lead to this area being skipped and moving on to the next link in the list. So here's the pseudocode for the walking of the linked list and deciding where to write. And so if we imagine that, you know, the walking of the linked list has finally reached this MDL is equal to this ACID MDL or the pivot MDL. So at this point, let's say that the, you know, pages added has been eight and that's greater than zero. The page size is hex 1000. The byte count is hex C00, so it's less than 1000. So this divided by that is ultimately going to equal a this MDL capacity of zero. Then it's going to check, you know, is zero less than pages added eight? And in this case, yes, it will be. So it'll go in here and it'll say, all right, so pages added minus equal this capacity, so minus zero, that's fine. And this MDL next is this MDL. So it's going to walk forward in the linked list and the next time it's going to loop through and it's going to say, okay, you know, is this the case? And it's going to add buffer to this MDL, which is now the worker MDL that they're trying to target. Don't dig into and don't think about this too much because it doesn't actually, this is just pseudocode. Uh, and if you think about it too much as I did when I was trying to write this up, it doesn't actually necessarily work for all possible cases. But the only thing that uh, the researchers were trying to illustrate here is just putting byte count of C00 means that you get to skip writing to this, which is read only, and move on to writing to the next link in the chain. And ultimately, that's going to lead to your attack controlled value. So now I have to remind you that, you know, yes, there was heap grooming, and yes, the attacker successfully overwrote some MDL somewhere, but they don't know exactly where it's going to go in the list. So it could overwrite like that, could overwrite like that, or it could overwrite like that. So the attacker doesn't really get to control where it overwrites, they just know it's going to overwrite somewhere. So ultimately their goal is to cause the overwrite, redirect to this pivot MDL or this asset MDL that they fully control in that non-randomized shared page between the secure kernel and the unsecure kernel. And they just want to make sure that they can, you know, write, 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 into this thing until they eventually can see that it writes through, skips over this, and writes to the quote unquote worker MDL. This is the thing that is ultimately, you know, wherever this next from the pivot MDL is, that's going to lead to some write at hex 30 beyond wherever that next pointer happened to point. So the attacker is going to, you know, write a little bit and then they're going to, you know, check whether or not. Uh, they, they can basically point this next at something that they can see where it writes to and where it's not going to crash. So first they point it at something that they control. And so they write a little bit and they see, you know, they're eyeballing this and they're saying, let's see if I have an eyeball animation. Perfect. Uh, they're eyeballing this and they're saying, you know, has this been written yet? So they write and then they check, has it been written? They write and has it been written? Has it written? Has it been written? And when they eventually see things, you know, pop out the end of this chain and they see a write to 
a location that they control the mapping to so they can control that you know next points here and then they did a write and it was written there now they know that you know effectively the full chain has been filled in the pivot mdl now you can just flip the next to point wherever you want and all subsequent writes are going to walk through this linked list and write wherever the next is pointing at this point so that's where you know other shared pages are helpful right there was this uh, VTL 0 to 1, this is an address which is writable in VTL 0 and read only in 1. On the other hand, when you're trying to write out from VTL 1 and, you know, see where the targeting is and observe it from VTL 0, this uh, PSP, no, PS plum log buffer, whatever that is, uh, this is an address which is read only from VTL 0, but which is writable from VTL 1. So this is a location that VTL 0 can read in order to ultimately detect that uh, now everything in the linked list has been filled in. Circle it, great. All right, so that ultimately becomes this shared page. So this is a shared page that is writable by VTL0 and that you know has their full asset MDL. And this is a shared page which is readable by VTL0. And so they can ultimately see when everything is written through to this particular address and they know that the linked list has been successfully filled in all the way up to the point where this can now lead to an arbitrary write to whatever location they would like to set next to. At that point, they can just change next and this is effectively like an arbitrary targeting acid pointer. And I like to think of it as the target worker MDL is just you know moving around looking for something and then blink, 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 you've got a location and you can go ahead and write to it. So this is a nice little targeted thing of an arbitrary write. That's right, successfully unlocked your arbitrary write primitive. So the exploit primitives of the monkeys have successfully been achieved. And yet, the attacker still does not have arbitrary code execution. So they've got an arbitrary write, but now they need to achieve arbitrary code execution in the secure kernel. So what are they going to do with that? Well, back to the predictable addresses list, uh, there was one particular thing called SK page context, and it was at a deterministic address. And this had some data structure. It looks like this. It's a big old data structure. And what was interesting about that is that it has within it some function pointers that are used to invoke functions that periodically will check the state of this data structure and make sure that it hasn't been corrupted. And that's great. That means that, you know, if the attacker is corrupting other stuff in here, then, you know, that'll be detected. But if the timer routines themselves are corrupted, then ultimately nothing is going to check, right? Instead of jumping to the legitimate integrity checker, it's going to jump to attacker controlled code. So basically they just, the attacker needs to overwrite, you know, they've got this thing that's at a deterministic address. They know the offset to find a function pointer that will be invoked periodically whenever uh, timer expires. And so they just need to point that at an address that they control that holds attacker controlled code. That looks like this with the next pointer being set to target the SPG context, ultimately point it there and then boom, overwrite that function pointer and point it at attacker controlled uh, content code. So ultimately the attacker has a capability to do an arbitrary number of write what wears. They just need to retarget the next. And so this is kind of a summary slide for the research to say on the VTL one side, you've got that pivot MDL as part of a shared page. It's ultimately going to be writing wherever next is pointing. The value that it writes will ultimately be a value that is specified via a PFN array as part of a call to uh, live dump add buffer. And so that walks the linked list and ultimately writes at whatever next list it's pointed to, uh, plus x30. And that is it. This is the overview of all of that attack. We only skipped one step in there that had to do with uh, corrupting memory where the attacker had placed their code in order to make it read, write, execute. Uh, as we talked about before with exploit mitigations, right? You should have non-executable memory and indeed they did, but if you can write to an arbitrary location, then you can change page permissions and mark memory as readable, writable, and executable. So they bypass things like address-based layout randomization thanks to the incompleteness of its implementation and the fact that there were addresses that were not randomized, and they bypassed 
non-executable uh, memory via corrupting the memory permissions. And with that, the attacker has successfully completed their goal and achieved arbitrary code execution. It's so simple, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, profit.